Today we're doing some car stuff, so I thought I'd make a quick little short video with some updates, cars and Boost and LSs and Mustangs and other things. Starting off, an update on the Nova. Rob's 1974 Nova. It's got a 5.3 twin S366 turbos. It's in a bunch of previous other videos if you want to check those out on our channel. I got the injector wiring done. They're all wired up. I got the throttle position sensors done. It's all wired up. These are the wires for the uh, idle air control valve, the stepper valve as it's called. So I just have to hook those up now. And then uh, the O2 sensor, the TAC, all the stuff that goes to the back, all the positive wires and fuel pump, that's all hooked up. And uh, yeah, so once I do these, then I get started on the bottom. Cool. Almost done. Almost ready to fire. Again, man. I gotta do the coil still, the knock sensors, the coolant temp sensor. Oh yeah, I'll try to get that. Someone asked, commented about the coils. They're <clears throat> it's hard. They're hard to see. Though. Yeah, they're really hard to see. They're <laughs> on the side of the block, which works out well because of the upswept headers, right? So yeah, lots of room under tons there. Of room there. And there's no no. The wires are totally clear. Of the headers, so there's no chance of them getting hot. Plus, they're not cluttering up the top of the motor. So basically, once I do this wire and I cover it with the wrap stuff, that's it. That's all the wiring that'll be on the top that you're going to see, which is pretty much nothing, which is awesome. And all the other wires are going to run through the bottom of the firewall for the coils and everything. So you won't uh, you won't really see too much. It'll be nice and clean. These are the wires for the coil. These yellow ones for the coils, I should say. That's why they're tied up out of the way. And all the rest of this stuff. I mean, a lot of these wires are not even going to get used because they're for like additional things or and or for things that because this kit's kind of like universal so i mean there's stuff for other different kinds of like throttle position sensors or idle air control valves or whatever all kinds of stuff like that cam cam sensor crank sensor all that stuff's all done under there all the wires relays and fuse box all that stuff, it's all hooked up. Looks like one of those fancy store-bought ones. <laughs> I've got the LS15 all loaded up with stuff, LS stuff for me and junk for Clayton. And we're going to Clayton's to work on the Sonic Stang. I'm thinking of doing like a vehicle check with the S15 and kind of going over it and all the small things I kind of miss I have to point out for you guys to see. So look for that coming up on SPP TV sometime. Probably, maybe. First thing I did was put the motor mounts back in now that they're painted and dry and drop the motor off the engine hoist crane thing and put my dormant intake on there. It looks pretty good. It does look a little taller than the truck intake will be or would be. It's not much taller than the truck intake, but it looks like it is a little bit, so I'll probably just keep my other hood and modify it so it's not to the windshield, so I can have wipers and maybe cut down some of the height in it, but uh, we'll see how that goes. These are the exhaust pieces that we got from the junkyard adventure we went on. The one side fits like we figured on the driver's side, and one of the passenger side ones we got works as well for the passenger side. The first set we got had this one on the passenger side, and that one worked for me, so it's a good thing we got that other passenger side one from another vehicle. So at this point, it's time to basically start building the hot side. That'll go on there like that, and then we'll just have to figure out the bends from there probably be a 90 from there, go over there and then up into there with another 90, that kind of thing, same on the other side. So it's a start, and now I just have to wait for the bends to get here, which should be next weekend, and then we'll be able to make a lot more progress on this thing. While I'm waiting for the hot side bends and pipes to show up, I'm going to make the T6 flange that the pipes are going to be welded into and that will bolt up to the bottom of the turbo mount 
So I just trace that out onto here and I'm gonna cut it out. I have the basic shape of the T6 flange cut out, did it with the uh, chop saw, blew the breaker like nine times. This uh, material is pretty thick and I uh, wasn't really trying to go through there too easily. I'm ready to punch some holes, drill those holes and start cutting out the middle, but first, lunchtime. Got the holes drilled in the T6 hot side flange. I got this piece of pipe here that'll be going to the manifold, but I'll give you an idea. They'll basically fit beside each other in there like that. Obviously not quite like that. They have to be kind of like rectangled out. You know what I mean? The question is whether or not to cut all this out and then have maybe a bigger pipe in there and then they jam into that and then fit and weld it and pinch it or whatever. Or just to leave it's a, uh, a split T6, and then both two and a half pipes just beat them and crush them so they fit in each side and then simply weld them up. That was my original idea, so I'm probably gonna go with that if we can make it happen. The bends are gonna be a little thinner wall than this probably, so they'll be a little easier to work with. Like I said earlier, at this point, we're basically just waiting for parts, so there might not be any updates for this one for you know a week and a half or so because I'm not gonna get the parts for a week, so. You guys probably won't see it for at least a week and a half, probably two weeks. I know the last few videos have had a bit less content, a bit less work going on. Uh, really, I'm just so busy trying to get this thing going. Lack of parts is one thing. Once parts are going to come in, then I'm going to fabricate the whole hot side and you guys get to see that. And all the other stuff I have to do, fitting the intercooler behind the dash and lots of other tips and kind of how to's on how to put a turbo system in a car like one of these for cheap and relatively easy. And in a few months from now, when this and Rob's car are ready, it'll be a lot more burnouts and drag racing action. So look forward to that. Also just wanted to say again, thanks for the support. The uh, subscribers are really growing really fast now. Uh, 2,400 and something I think we're at. So that's great. The more people that see the videos, the better. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed and check back for more updates of this and other LS powered hot rods and other cool shit.